Okay, in this uh, video, I'm going to just show you everything you need to know about mean, um, the mean of group data and weighted mean in 15 minutes. So I better get rolling. So to, to start off with, um, I'll show you my presentation here on kind of boring, but uh, it helps us get through uh, mean. Um, there are two types of data that we're going to deal with. Um, a statistic is a characteristic or measure obtained by using data values from a sample. So if you have, a, say you're pop, getting the whole population of the United States, you're not going to ask everybody the question. That, that's too costly. So you're going to just randomly sample them in some manner. A parameter is a characteristic that measures, or a measure that's obtained from the whole population. So, um, you know, if you're at a small class D school in Nebraska, you know, less than 30 or 40 students, you can go out and ask every student uh, what they think about something, and it's not going to be a big deal. Uh, when we round, we're going to always round when our calculations are done, generally. And that brings us to the probably the most important thing of, um, when we're dealing with mean and population mean. Um, Mean generally is the sum of all the values divided by the number of the values, so the number we have. Um, and you've got a couple formulas there that might look a little daunting, but sample mean is represented by an X bar. So if we went out and only got part, only asked part of the people in the United States um, the question that we're asking, you know, how many children do you have? Um, that would be a sample mean. But if I went to my classmates and asked, uh, you know, how many children they had, um, that's going to be population mean because I can ask everybody in the class. And we represent population with a mu, um, the Greek letter mu. And it's that little, you know, I'll try to click on it there. Whoops, I covered it up. But it's that little symbol to the left there. And X bar, again, is how we represent sample mean. So that's probably the most important, important aspect of this. So let's get started on these. Um, so the first thing is um, we're going to find, I'm, I skipped, well, I better not skip. So for example, let's say I went out to my track team, uh, and I only have, it was a very small track team with only Five participants. That's all we have. And uh, and maybe it was just my long distance runner. And I just asked him that week, you know, how many miles did you run this week? And so all five of my athletes gave me their number. And so they, you know, one ran five miles, one ran 12 miles, one ran 15 miles, one ran eight miles, and one ran three miles. And so you add that up. Um, to find mean, so since this is the whole population, we'll use that mu value. So my mean is 5 plus 12 plus 15 plus 8 plus 3 divided by however many we have. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So divided by 5. And uh, you do this and you'd get 8.6. Another rule for mean is to always go one more decimal place than your data, your, your original data. So 5, 12, 15, 8, and 3 are all units or whole numbers. So I would want a tenth digit. Uh, go to the tenth place, so 8.6. And so that's what I mean by, by mean. And that hopefully most people are pretty okay with that. So it gets tricky when we have to find the mean of group data. For instance, frequency distributions. So here, I've asked um, a larger, uh, maybe I just uh, scanned the whole track population in the whole United States. I went around and randomly asked uh, um, one person out of every track team in Nebraska, for instance, uh, how far they ran. And so we, there were so many of them, we grouped the data and I'll move it over just a little. And so we have this, this table where we have our classes of, we had one person that ran between 
five point five and ten point five miles. We had two people that ran between ten point five miles and fifteen point five miles, and so on and etc. On down, and we had twenty people in in this particular sample, and we need to find the mean of this grouped data without having the individual data points anywhere. So the first thing you're going to do is find the midpoint of each of your class limits. So I'm going to hit pause and fill those in. To find that mean you take 5.5 plus 10.5 divided by 2. So I'll write that up there. So 5.5 plus 10.5 divided by 2 and uh, so when you do that you should get an 8 and so yeah so that would be 8 and then you keep on going so 10.5 plus 15.5 divided by 2 and that would be uh, 13 and you keep on rolling down the list and I'll just fill it in from here so that would be 18 23 uh, 28 because I am a super genius calculator 33 38 and so those are our midpoints of each class then the last step here on this last column is you take your frequency times it's kind of like a weighted mean so we're going to take our frequency times our midpoints and so 8 times 1 is 8 13 times 2 is 26 uh, 18 times 3 is 54 uh, 115, uh, 112, 99, and 76. Okay. Then what you do is you add all those up. So I'll do that next. So we add all those up and we get 490. And we have 20 total people. So our mean for this sample would be X bar since it was a sample of 490 divided by 20 and that would be 24 you know on average this group ran 24 and a half miles so that's how you find the mean of group data if you don't have the data anymore and all you have is a frequency distribution and believe it or not I ran into that situation time or two when we needed the mean even especially working in schools. You run into that quite a bit. You have the table, but you don't have the original data. You still need to find the mean of everything. Okay, so um, that's that part. The last uh, type of mean I'm going to show you is a weighted mean. And a good example of, the, of that is just uh, figuring GPAs. So let's say, um, you know, A is worth... Uh, four points, a B is worth three points, a C is worth two points, and a D is worth one point. And let's say you took some courses, for instance. Let's say you took uh, calculus, which is a five credit class at most colleges, and you got a B. Um, statistics is a three credit class, so, so calculus is weighted five times because it, it, it encompasses a, an hour every day of the week. Statistics is only a three credit hour class and of course you got an A in it because you had a great teacher like me. <laughs> right. So um, you got an A there so it's weighted at three credits because of the three times it meets. History, three credits, you got a C and then you took, uh, you're required to take a PE class of some kind so you took golf and uh, it was worth two credits and you got an A. So how you figure a weighted average of this is to take your weight times um, times what it's worth. So an A is worth four points, a B is worth three, and a C is worth two. So for that five-hour uh, cal five calculus course it, where, that you got a B in, that would be five times three for the B plus um, for the stats class, it was weighted three times, but you got an A in it times four. Plus, uh, the history class was weighted at three times, and you got a C in it, so you get that's times two. Plus, the golf 
course, it was only weighted twice, and you got an A in it, so that would be times 4. And then you divide that by your total number of weights. And so if you add up all the weights, the 5, 3, 3, and the 2, you'd get 13. And so um, if you add all that up, you'd have 41 on the top over 13, which is equal to 3.2 for a GPA. And so that's weighted average. Now, I, there's other problems, obviously, with weighted average that are a little more difficult. And uh, we'll hopefully get into some of those. But for the most part, this is about everything you need to know about mean for this course. Um, so good luck. I hope this helps. And see you next time.